If you've ever wondered what it's like to play an actual vintage acoustic guitar, you're gonna wanna stick around for this video as we unveil and go over the new Murphy Lab collection. The closest that you're gonna get to an actual vintage instrument without that hefty price tag. And make sure you watch till the end where we're gonna have a special one-on-one -on -one conversation with the man himself, Mr. Tom Murphy. The Murphy Lab aging process finally comes to our acoustic offerings. Vintage period correct models now featuring realistic aging done right under the close watch of Tom Murphy and his small elite team who join forces with our highly skilled acoustic experts in Bozeman, Montana. Get a chance now to play these historic models with the look and feel of playing history behind them. In this video, we'll be looking at the all new Murphy Lab Acoustic Collection. But real quick, before we dive in, make sure you hit the like button, ring the bell, and subscribe to our channel. It'll keep you up to date on future videos like this. Let's get started. First up is the 1933 L00 Ebony, and this is light aged, beautiful little guitar. First emerging out of the 1930s, a fantastic smaller body, parlor sized instrument with a strong projection, even for something this small, which isn't usually common. We've got mahogany back and sides. And the top on this is gonna be a thermally aged red spruce top. Bracing is also red spruce and we're using hide glue. So we've got a little bit more projection and a little bit more transfer of sound evenly up and down this whole body here. Neck is nice. It's a uh, mahogany V profile. Rosewood fingerboard on this one. Let's hear a little bit more. I mean, really nice and even. You've got a nice little chime and it's controlled. So you're hearing a bone nut and saddle on this. So you've got nice warmth there. Aged hardware, of course, on the Murphy Lab stuff. On the back, you'll see the tuners. You've got the square end cream button tuners. And that's aged hardware there, really nice. The, the nitro lacquer here is that Murphy Lab uh, aged nitro lacquer. So it's going to age gracefully over time and the more that you play it. So everyone's guitar is gonna have a slightly different story to tell after a few years of playing. Also on these models, you're gonna see a period correct case and of course a certificate of authenticity. <music> So in conclusion, final thoughts and takeaways on this model. Again, like I was saying, it's a great smaller guitar to take around, easy to navigate. Uh, picking comes to mind, folk. You know, you've got some of that Robert Johnson blues in there as well. Really nice little guitar, again, for smaller hands, smaller frames, uh, easy to travel and go. Just a cool little guitar. Let's go to the next one.
So here we have next up is the 1942 Banner J45 in a beautiful vintage sunburst. Light aged, of course, here again. Probably the most recorded guitar of all time. The original workhorse from Gibson now gets to be aged in perfection there. We've got mahogany back and sides, of course. And uh, again, you get that thermally aged red spruce top. We've got the red spruce X bracing inside with the high glue for even more projection and tonal resonance. Now the neck on this is gonna be the historic profile mahogany neck, really comfy. Feels broken in, really great. Rows of fingerboard on that guy, really nice. And the neck joint is gonna be a compound dovetail. Let's hear a little bit more. Really nice, even sounding guitar here. Great for the singer songwriter. You can hear how it stays together even when I dig into it. We've got a bone nut and saddle, uh, aged hardware, of course. And on the back, you can see there, we've got those nice strap style open back cream button tuners. Nice and aged there. Really well done. On the front, we've got a uh, teardrop tortoiseshell pick guard, aged, of course. Really nice and authentic looking. Period Correct case is gonna come with this guy, as well as Mother of Pearl inlays, if you can see closely there on the fretboard. Really nice touch. Of course, again, that Murphy Lab aged nitro for authentic looks that will age gracefully over time. And these, of course, will always come with a uh, certificate of authenticity. Really nice guitar. Final thoughts here on this. You can't go wrong with this original workhorse here. It's a great straight ahead guitar. Great for bluegrass, for the singer songwriter, strumming, picking. This one really can cover a lot of ground. And I love the fact that it's now in this aged presentation here because it feels broken in. It feels like it's been around for 50 plus years on the road in the hands of some of the best players out there. It really feels like it's got a story. So this one is a great go-to. Let's check out the next guitar. So moving on to the 1942 Banner Southern Jumbo Vintage Sunburst, light aged. Wide range on this one, a little bit deeper than the last guitar. I would say great for first position chords to finger picking everything in the middle. Rosewood back and sides, really nice touch there, if you can see that. And again, that thermally aged red spruce top. And we've got the bracing that's also red spruce and the high glue for that uh, projection and tonal resonance. C profile neck. Really nice there. And you can see on that fretboard, we've got those uh, mother of pearl parallelograms. Really nice touch. Next, super comfy on this one. Let's hear a little bit more. Really nice sounding guitar. We've got that bone nut, bone saddle, and bone uh, bridge pins on this one. Open back cream button tuners. Check that out. 
with the aged nickel hardware. And of course, you're gonna get a period correct case, COA, and uh, again, we've got that Murphy Lab aged nitro finish that's just gonna keep going as the years go by. Really nice guitar. Final takeaways on this one, I think it's a little bit beefier sounding than the uh, last guitar, the J45 we heard. Something about this one, just it's got a little bit of low resonance, uh, low mids, which I enjoy. And uh, you can't go wrong for the singer-songwriter, the finger picker again, a great go-to uh, instrument with that nice look of, you know, that has just been played and loved for many years. Let's go to the next guitar. And here we have the 1960 Hummingbird in a Heritage Cherry Sunburst Light Age. Beautiful guitar, check that out. Our first square shoulder. We've got a uh, mahogany back and sides on this one. Thermally aged Sitka Spruce top, of course. Now you're gonna have multi-ply binding on the sides here and then a single ply on the fretboard, uh, Rosewood fretboard that is. Really nice there. Check that out. Mahogany neck, and it's a rounded C profile. Real comfy. Now, there's a compound dovetail neck joint uh, where it reaches the body. So again, you're gonna get a really nice uh, fit and uh, allowing the tone to resonate up and down throughout the whole instrument here. Uh, let's hear a little bit more. Fantastic sounding, big, round. You know, the square shoulder really gives you more projection, gives you a little bit more bottom. We've got a bone nut, saddle, and bridge pins on this model. Uh, Goto tuners on the back there. Aged, really nice touch. That's the uh, keystone buttons. And uh, on the front, you can see that pick guard. That's a Murphy Lab casted pick guard. I mean, just looks like a vintage guitar all around right there. Really nice. You're gonna get a period correct case with this, of course, certificate of authenticity. And again, you've got that Murphy Lab aged nitro. You can see that checking there, really well done. And it'll continue to age gracefully as you play it. So, you know, final thoughts on this one in particular. I really love the big, bold sound it has. It's uh, it's a little bit lower. Again, the square shoulder is great for projection. As you heard, it's great for cowboy chords. We can do a little picking on this. And, you know, this neck is so comfy, you can navigate up and down with no problems. A really great uh, choice here on uh, acoustics in general. You can't go wrong with the classic Hummingbird. But before we get to this next guitar, remember all of these are available on our website direct. You can go there at gibson.com, check out all the specs and buy direct from us. We do international shipping as well.
Last year we have the 1957 SJ200. Beautiful guitar, check that out. Vintage Sunburst, Light Aged. King of the Flat Tops, our big box, uh, you know, Jumbo Strummer. This really sits in the back of a band. It holds it down for the rhythm players out there. Just really deep sounding. Hand selected Flame Maple on the uh, sides and the back. Look at that, really neat. So we have a thermally aged Sitka spruce top, scalp X bracing inside with the high glue again for that transfer of sound and resonance. Rounded profile neck there, really comfy. It's got some flame on the back, a little bit of light checking, really nice and tasty there. Really nice. Rose of fingerboard, a compound dovetail neck to body joint. So you've got a great transfer vibration there from uh, throughout the whole instrument, of course. Let's hear a little bit more. So continuing on with the specs, we've got uh, multi-ply binding on the body, single on the uh, the fretboard here, the neck, and uh, on the back you can actually see those uh, Goto tuners with the keystone buttons, a hardware of course, really nice. And on the front of the fretboard here we've got those Mother of Pearl graduated crown inlays. Look at that, real regal touch there. Bone nut, bone saddle and bridge pins. And then check out this bridge here. We've got the old school four bar mustache bridge. True to this model, really nice. Classic pick guard. These are gonna come with a period correct case, of course, and a certificate of authenticity, as well as you're gonna get that Murphy Lab aged nitro lacquer there that will age gracefully over time. Just a real great guitar. So final thoughts on this one is, again, if you're looking for a solid rhythm guitar, something that is just really gonna hold it down with those chords, this is your big box strummer here. I mean, it's just beefy, it's bassy, it's got a lot of projection, really nice guitar to keep things solid and, uh, and, and tight in a band situation or just to accompany yourself if you're a singer-songwriter. Now for the bonus section of the video, let's cut to a quick interview with the man himself, Mr. Tom Murphy. Tom, thank you so hey. much for, for coming down, man, sure. and joining us. Well, hey, I've loved talking about this stuff and being part of it. You know, we're all familiar with the electrics. We're all familiar, you know, with, with uh, aging out there, or I should say we think we are. Yeah. But there was something that I, you know, in this video that we're making right now, there's something about these guitars, and I've played the, the, the standard issue guitars of these, even the custom shop ones, man. There's something about when the guitars are going through this process, not only does it make me feel like it's a real vintage instrument, but it also sounds like one without all of the, the uh, you know, sometimes you've got uh, fret work or there's some dead spots or things that might have been changed on the instrument. I mean, it's kind of nice to, and refreshing to know that this is as close as I'm going to get and it's got that thing. Old guitars are wonderful and they do age and improve with age, but yeah. they also can loosen up, you know, mm. braces and, uh, and frets and what I think I can recognize on our Murphy Lab acoustics, it's all crystal clear. It doesn't sound new. It sounds old, but it's all really there. Yes. Uh, doesn't sound worn out or mm -hmm. tired. It's re really, really good. And so, of course, we have a proprietary finish that we have used from the beginning at the Murphy Lab right. in Nashville. At a point where they thought they wanted to try it on the acoustics, I was very excited. Uh, I thought it can hurt at all, mm -hmm. but the sonic benefits that we 
seem to recognize now just are awesome. And that's why we wanted to highlight the sound, not a bunch of crazy aging and scratching. Yeah, I noticed that. They're all really tastefully, you know, low profile on the aging, all yeah. light aged on this round, right? If, if you look, uh, the, uh, the guys in Montana, in the lab, they're trying to maintain a, in the spruce the, the sort of corduroy washboard feel of, mm -hmm. the, of the sunken grain. That's that They have a process for preserving that. If you look close, it sort of looks like an old guitar too. It sure does. Weather check, finish all over. And think about the top of a, an acoustic guitar needing to vibrate yes. and be free to vibrate. Well, there's no restriction because this is completely weather checked, so there's no solid barrier to mute the top. Oh. So I, I really believe that's what we're hearing. You have been doing this for quite a while. You started off doing restoration. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of funny because it's almost like reverse engineering to try and get to this place that we are now, yeah, right? Uh, I'd like to think that using some of the techniques that I stumbled on years ago w were valid on restoration because you you see so many repairs where a neck had to be refinished right. and it didn't match the aged body naturally. Sure. So I just tried some sort of goofy things and at some point pretty early on I realized I can get serious about this, meaning it's not just a joke, it's if I refine it it's something that can be utilized in restoration. Yes. Uh, somebody said one time, it was written that I restored an electric guitar, and somebody said, how do you restore an electric guitar? Oh, right. right. Well, you can restore the, the look. Sure. And hopefully the feel, too. But frankly, with the Murphy Lab acoustics, it we're not done yet. When we're hearing what we hear on the acoustics, that's a box that makes sound, and, and we're making the sound better. Yeah, and there's nothing to hide behind. No, I mean it's straight ahead. I, I'm I'm sorry, but like people will say, well, you know, it's just a guitar that's beat up. It's like, come on, it's more than that. Yes, you know, that's why we didn't want to feature too uh, radical, uh, distressing, as right. I call it. I call the finished age now, and the, and the distressing is what people call age. There's something about this lacquer, right? There's something different. I mean, because oh, definitely, it. it I'm telling these things sound so alive. And, you know, it makes you a true believer where it's like, okay, now the proof is right in front of right you. Right there. Nothing to hide behind. It's straight ahead. We make this guitar in a non, you know, aged, straight up, even nitro. Oh, sure. But now the, the Murphy Lab uh, lacquer, it's a little bit different than the lacquer that you'll see on a custom shop or a standard USA model. Yeah, yeah, right? it's exclusive to the lab. Gotcha, gotcha. And it, it, would you say that it's thinner or is it just a different type it, of it material? It ends up thinner, yeah. I mean, okay. believe it or not, it's sprayed on just like normal lacquer and oh. they use about the same number of coats. Got it. Uh, uh, we're, we're not trying to shortcut. I hate when when someone thinks they made a guitar a finish a more uh, like old by not putting very much on. Oh, I you have heard this. You have, have to process it, yeah. it through sanding especially and so on uh, to... and and uh, uh, processing that will make it, n no matter how many coats you have on, it doesn't look like very much. Mm. So it will crack and give us the beautiful weather checking effect, which I believe relaxes the guitar. I yeah. Mean, I feel, and I've been saying, I haven't written this down yet, but I used to take a new guitar with a new finish and try to make it look old. Okay. And I think now we take a new guitar and put an old finish on it. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. It? So it's not like you can just, it, it doesn't really work the same if we were to get a nitro sprayed guitar no. and then try to do what no, you no. do on it. No, be the no, same thing. no. We have two very important components okay. that let us achieve the effect that we get. And then the, the benefit of what we thought we might get is the sound. Because yeah. it sounds free to ring yeah. and vibrate. I mean, like I said, it's a box of No, it, it has a. Oh yeah, even That's this, loud. even this little guy here. Yeah, the guitar is twice as small as this, pretty much, but it sounds just as loud. It, it, it's yeah. awesome. I like the fact I'm not a vintage aficionado. I have vintage guitars, and I yeah. have an old Gibson. But when I strum this, and I hear every single note balanced with all the others, it just lets this guy keep up with that guy. So now, backstory on this. You were approached, uh, you, your team, you and your team, and then the, the acoustic experts at Bozeman, Montana, mm -hmm. you guys all got together on this. 
They sent me a J200 and a J45 a few years ago. Yeah. So I painted J200, J45, applied Murphy Lab finish to them, and uh, some of the techniques we used to gener generate checking, right. I did. Uh, and boy, the sound was just there immediately. So the Murphy Lab Montana was conceived uh, uh, quite a while before that, I mean, the the, con the idea of having a Murphy Lab Montana. We do some crazy things. Uh, people know about our crazy tools of car keys and so on. Yeah. We don't use those much on these, but uh, I just helped them with some things that they were still sort of wondering about, you know. I mean, right. They, they know how to build the guitars, and but they just use our finish, and then some of the things that you want to maybe avoid with our finish. And uh, Let me grab this guy, too, while we're here. So it's interesting because I didn't really know that there was going to be that much of a different. I mean, it, it's a different lacquer altogether. Oh, I mean, now we've got the hummingbird here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had the uh, the J forty five. You've got the L double O. I mean, looking at this guitar again, Tom, I you could tell me that this was a, a, a vintage instrument, and I'd be like, yeah, sure. I mean, I would I would think maybe it had some fret work done. The fret looks, you know, the fret work yeah. of course is is new, but still, it just it really has that thing. Obviously, we decided to do the classic models. Oh, sure. The go-to, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. When you think of Gibson, these are the models that you think of, you know? How much difference was there really in relicking an acoustic versus an electric? Well, certain things don't happen to acoustics that happen to electrics because of the way people hold them. Ah. Uh, our famed belt buckle wear and our arm wear on our Les Pauls, for instance, that, that's not going to appear on the, the acoustics of how they were played. Sure. But now the stuff here, you see a little signs of pick where that's yeah. natural that's completely a, that's uh, where you would strum yeah i mean it's everybody sees that all the time so a little of that's added to just sort of blend with uh the the idea of it being vintagey sounding and feeling right uh i do say that the necks have of course i have a murphy lab guitar God, the necks are comfy it's just uh well, the roll binding. Oh my for God! That's right. That's right. Because that's really each one. You don't just... feel the edge of the fingerboard. No. That's the first thing because, like I said, even if you couldn't see the guitar, you can feel it in your hand. Yes. And plus, our finish doesn't have that sticky sort of feel on the back of the neck, which right. can happen. Absolutely. Uh, so, while you're playing it and hearing it, uh, I have played these guitars where I didn't want to quit. I didn't want to stop playing. No, you're right. I usually get fatigued a little bit playing an acoustic for a little bit, and uh, as soon as they threw them in my hands, it was like, let's just go. Yes. No, uh, and the fatigue is just, it, there is none, really. Well, we were saying that I don't like a guitar that I have to try to pull the notes out of. Yes. Or have a dead spot. Yes. Go, well, I don't want to play there. You can hear it inside the box. And it's like a bell-like. It's note. loud. Yeah. And it's consistent up and down. Yeah. Usually so, when I get past the fifth fret on an acoustic, yeah. I kind of don't yeah, the want to go. Gets a little I want to keep. I want to go back down. So the, yeah. The, yeah. There's so much hand labor that yes. goes into an acoustic guitar in general. Now we're talking about extra hand labor on top of that for the aesthetics. Yes. Not one guitar is going to look the same from the other. They're all going to have a slight uniqueness to them. Yes. Uh, I'll say that I have not played a dead sounding Murphy Lab acoustic. That's the good news. Yeah. But some will check more than others. Okay. I mean, it's it's wood. It moves, mm -hmm. and there's moisture content to take into account. There's a we we talk about on these videos. You know, we talk about one of my things that I'll tell uh, people in general with nitro is that it'll age gracefully over time. Oh, sure. And, it, and it'll 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 age to your playing profile, right? Sure. Like yes, you were saying. Well. Like, I tend to strum a little bit more in this. Well, actually, this is funny because this one kind of looks perfect to where yeah. I would actually yeah. play it. Uh, but this reminds me of even kind of doing the little, like, one, two, sure. three, four, and then uh -huh. getting into a song. Precisely. You know? uh, so that makes total sense because I've seen relict or aged guitars, and sometimes the checking or the wear doesn't really make sense to me. Oh, no, no. That, yeah, that's. Like I said, we have crazy tools that we use or make our, on our own at the lab. And, in Nashville, yeah, because we want to we want to accomplish a certain uh, 
damaged area. Sure. How's that happen? We have one called Rockstar Bling, which is right here. Okay. Uh, oh, from like a jacket? For, for, well, well, mostly or, uh, bracelets. Uh, bracelets, bracelets, yeah. yes. And uh, so we have something for that very thing. Well, uh, you can't hand somebody inexperienced these crazy tools. That go, okay, see you in the morning. What will they do to a guitar? Right. Put scratches, dings, where there normally wouldn't be. You have to understand. We even call this a G G chord wear right here. Your thumb is right here. It's oh, not gotcha. on this guitar. Uh, oh, I understand. But I understand. that's what that is. You'll yeah. see it a lot on, on old guitars. Well, yeah. you don't want to put that right here. No. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Okay. So on these, you have to understand where they would probably encounter some scratches. M mostly scratching. Well, it's your best case scenario for buying a vintage acoustic, as far as the wear goes. I, like it's your best case scenario, right? Like it's yeah. still not. It, it's just enough wear to give it that thing. My guitar is really worn and beat. My fifty-two. Really? Yeah. And it's really good sounding. Now, is that a combination it's... of of there not being finish? Uh, explain to us the difference where. Someone says, well, if you take the finish off a guitar, it's going to resonate much more than it has finish on it. Is there, there's got to be some combination. I'll just combination. say in general, people think I'm a finished expert. I'm not, but I will yeah. say this. Between loving and admiring the guitars and being wondering about them when I'm staring at them, how that happened, what, uh, you, you don't want a, a real, you don't want a thick finish on an acoustic guitar. Mm. Uh, but you have to put a, 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 a substantial finish to protect the wood. People say no finish would be best. Well, to a point, then your guitar's going to crack. It's got no protection yeah. from elements and moisture and so on. What's cool here is they do have a mill check. They can check the thickness of the finish. They're, they're not scrimping on the finish, uh, but they have techniques to make it look thin. Okay. It's just a different. I, I can uh, see the grain in the spruce right, on this guitar. Right. That's what you want to see. Yeah. And that happens over time on, on an old guitar because ah, that's th right. There are solvents right. in lacquer, and they gas off into the air, and it just leaves the resins or solids. And everybody's going, "Well, I wish I'd hurry up and do that on my guitar." Yeah. Well, for the most part, they have sort of figured out how to do that in Montana on these guitars. So you can look at it closely and go, "Dang, that's." Patina is what you're looking at, what you're seeing, shine or not shine. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to use friction and scotch bright to make a guitar look old. That's not right. What I, well, you know, understanding that it's like a, a spe even a special type of lacquer that's been formulated specifically for these reasons, as opposed to everyone thinking, you know, they just spray a little bit on there. Yeah, yeah, right. Or it is the same lacquer, and it's just, you know, there's 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 a lot more going on. They researched that, and I even asked them up there, how many coats are you putting on? Yeah. Don't scrimp, but get away with what you can get away with, meaning minimum coats. Yes. But you still have to process the guitar. You can't leave it where you wear right through it immediately. Right. But people need to understand, if you do buy into our aged guitars, lab guitars, they're going to wear. Yeah. I have a gold top Les Paul. I played one gig, and it's got four chips in the paint right here. There you go. Brand new guitar. Okay. From the lab. So you have brand new guitar. Oh, all, all your guitars are not. Oh aged. no 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 <laughs> no. But I played yeah. one gig and went. What what happened? It was literally buttons on my shirt. Yeah. And I had to laugh because I tell people that's going to happen uh, on your ultralight, for instance. And it'll these guitars here. It won't take much for a professional player to play it regularly to start seeing all of this wear increase. And then it's got their unique little right. stamp and it's, on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not. The downside, that's no. cool. And so I've told people, whatever happens to your guitar, you did it. You when you see that after a gig, you know, you bump a mic stand or or a pick. And so it's gonna be great to watch these guitars go out into the world. I think so too. And become yes. instruments, especially with professional players and amateurs to to even be at home or at a jam yeah. and get this awesome sound. I guarantee there are gonna be guys going, let, let me hear that thing. Yeah. No, they speak for themselves. I, 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 they're loud. They're again, they're detailed. Like you said, every note rings true. Every string re, uh, rings even. It, it's they're a breeze to play. It, like I said, not fatiguing. So I'm super excited. I think you guys knocked it out of the park, man. And I know well, this is just I the beginning. I appreciate it, but I also am really happy, and I give Montana all of the credit. Yes, I just had some tips and pointers and. They've just done great. And so, I mean, this has my name on it. Right. And so it's very personal. And I can 
be happier. It's all like I'm going, whew, wow. Yeah. It's all about the sound. Yes. Our guitars look really cool, and they sound great, too. Sure. Plugged sure. into an amplifier. And they play great. Plugged yeah. into an amplifier, but there's no amplifier making this sound. No. Uh, um, I'm with you. I'm not a huge acoustic player, um, but for some reason, this... Again, even today when we're shooting this video, it, you know, the playing samples are all coming to me very quickly. It, it, my, my arm still feels good. I've played a couple of these already now. I've got a few more to do. Uh, just really great, man. You guys did a really great job. And, it, and it's the proof in the pudding where it's like, now that there's nothing to hide behind pickups, uh, electronics, mm -hmm. I know all of it makes, all of it's a factor. All of it's a factor it in is. the sound. But to hear it in its most uh, stripped down format, real special, man. And I know cool. you're you're the pioneer, if not the the creator of, of doing this whole thing to guitars in general. Well, so it's like, mother, mother nature was doing sure. it way before, <laughs> before me. But but for the fact that you're doing restorations and all that prior, I mean, it gives me a lot of uh, backstory into you just being able to kind of see this from all different angles. Well, you know, uh, imagine the concern I had when people want to take my thing or part of my thing yeah. and do stuff with it. It's like, just be careful. They've done a great job. They're, for, I mean. You know, they would consult with me and ask me what I wanted and yeah. what I thought about sure. it. And uh, every encounter was like, oh my gosh, you guys are doing great. I couldn't oh, be man. happier. No, it's great. Tom, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come down sure. and visit with us, man. And uh, again, fantastic job on these. I think the world is going to enjoy them. I'm enjoying them. That's I know all of our artists are that have already tried these out. Um, everybody, Tom Murphy here on the Gibson Gear Guide. Stay tuned for more. We're going to be going, uh, I think we're going to be taking a visit to come see you soon, hopefully, awesome. and, and bug you for a little bit. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, check these out on our website on the, uh, the acoustic collection under the Murphy Lab collection, and also check out the electrics. They're stunning, and uh, they are just a work of art, each single one of them. Uh, thanks so much, Tom. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chances are you're liking this video and you're interested in Murphy Lab guitars in general, so make sure you head over to the gear guide and check out our Murphy Lab aging levels video where we break down the different aging levels and what you get offered in the Les Paul collection. Thanks for watching.